Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, today's presentation is going to be about post-secondary opportunities and a little bit about the SMART report that opened um, this Monday. Um, a couple housekeeping uh, tips that we do want to bring up before we do get into our presentation is um, whenever it comes to questions, we will try to answer as many as we can throughout the uh, presentation. But if you have a question that is specifically for a student that's in your school, we ask that you email that to us directly. And at the end of this presentation will be all of our contact information. Um, and then we will be able to do a little bit more um, communication with you about that particular issue that you're having, just because we do take FERPA very seriously. And so we don't want um, to take any chances of any confidential information you know, being shared or released by accident or any of that sort. So if you will save those questions to send us in an email. Um, my name is Misty Agarwal. I'm the Assistant Executive Director of Accountability. Um, I am more than happy to take those emails or you can email them to any of our staff that's listed at the end of this presentation. Okay, so let's get started. So post-secondary opportunities. Um, this is the only, this report only pertains to students who are enrolled in your school for the school year 2018-2019. And we are only looking at the high school students. Um, the report is also important because this is the data that will be used um, in calculating your post-secondary opportunities indicator. Um, the post-secondary opportunities indicator, it measures the percentage of students who participate in at least one of the approved opportunities. Um, this indicator is worth 10 points, um, and it counts only once. So one point uh, per student. They could take five or six courses, but they would only get that one point for participation. Um, so this report certifies student participation and completion in an approved post-secondary course for credit in the post-secondary opportunity. So it has to be an approved course. So please note um, that ninth and 10th graders will show um, up in the post-secondary opportunities report. However, um, we are only looking at participation points for the 11th and 12th grade. But we do want to continue to collect all of high school's post-secondary opportunities so that we can continue to see that data um, and then maybe later discussions about possibly adding those you know, ninth and 10th grader uh, post-opportunities. Um, so what do we um, look for in this report? What's counted? Um, a student must have finished his, his or her course with at least a D and have all the appropriate fields reported. So if it's you know, a semester, we have to see that grade. If it's trimester, you know, more than one grade should be there. Um, and then, of course, at least a D or higher. Um, any incomplete records that come through um, will not earn credit. So an example is if you have a missing grade for a second semester, um, then that won't be counted and it, you wouldn't get that point for that uh, class because it would look unfinished. Um, so some things that we are looking for is the advanced placement courses, um, IB courses, internships, um, dual or concurrent college enrollment, um, and then also industry certification programs. That would be a career tech. So where does this data come from? This report is populated in your local student information system. Um, as such, just um, for a note, if that information is showing correctly in your student information system, it should be translating to the WAVE properly. Um, there should be no errors in your data at that point, but you still are going to want to go through your post-secondary report with a fine-tooth comb because, you know, errors do happen, so I guess we shouldn't say it never happens. Um, discrepancies between the report and your local um, SIS um, can point to two issues. One, missing information in the report that was generated by us. So it could be on our end. Another way it could be is um, translation error. So if your vendor didn't translate, you know, it didn't map correctly, then that could be something that's going on with why we're not seeing the same thing in the wave as you're putting into your student information system. And if that's the case, then you'd want to contact your vendor to clarify that. Um, so what should I be reviewing with this report? Um, it's encouraged that districts use the appropriate instructional level for AP and IB courses. Um, so that's something you're definitely going to want to focus on. Official course titles should be displayed correctly. 
Um, instructional level of the course is important and should be put in there. The correct OCAS codes um, should be applied. And you can find the OCAS codes in two different places, actually, on our um, State Department of Education website. You can go to the Accreditation tab um, and look at that web page. And at the bottom, you'll see um, an, a link for codes for OCAS. Or you can go to our page, um, which is the Accountability page. And you'll just click on our tab. And then we will have a Post-Secondary Opportunities Guide posted, along with a link to those um, other OCAS codes. Um, the term span description should be posted in the report and showing correctly. So semester, trimester, quarter, we really need those to you know, coincide with um, the course length. Review um, the HAS course column, which is one of a very important one because if it's marked false, then it looks like it wasn't finished, so you're going to want to put true. Um, and then you're also going to want to verify that participation column. Um, that should always be marked as one if they participated. If you're seeing zeros when you filter it, those are the students you kind of want to look at to see what's missing, why it's not showing as one. Um, so instructional level codes for AP and IP, um, you're always going to want to use 0574. That translates to IB. Um, and then 0575 translates to AP. So 0575 for AP courses, and 0574 um, would be IB. However, um, if you do have dual um, concurrent college courses, schools must have the instructional level code of 0576, which translates to college level. So 0576 would be your college level courses. Um, another just side note is please uh, look at the letter grade that we use, um, A, B, C, D, and F. If you're seeing as percentage, then that gets translated into a letter grade. Any other letters like S, for un, you know, satisfactory or U for unsatisfactory will not be accepted. So we need that A through F um, grade or a percentage that we can translate into a grade. Okay, um, just a reminder for block courses. Um, this was something that came up on our radar a few times this last go around. Um, you need to add the word block in the term in order for the length of the course to be calculated correctly. So that word block has to be in there. Um, the calculations are as followed with the courses. Um, term span code equal to 0828, that's a semester. We'll treat that as one semester. Um, 0829, which uh, turns into a trimester, will be treated as one trimester. And then 0830, which is a quarter, will treat like one quarter. So we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough with single sign-on and going through the wave where I can show you where exactly this report is um, and some things you need to look at as you're going through the report. So we would sign on via single sign-on. And we have a test site here so that everything in here is populated as just fake data so that we're able to really show you um, how it looks. So you would log into your single sign-on. Then you would come down here to you know, your multiple blocks, but you're going to go to the wave. You'll click on that. And if it's working properly today, we'll see this. Um, you're going to get into your personalized wave page, and you'll go to your reporting tab. You'll click on state reporting certification. And then right here is where you will see a lot of information about that rep the reports and due dates and all that good information. You would go down here to your county district code. You'll pick one, and I'm just going to pick a random one. Then you're going to go to your listing of reports. Um, when they show open, you know, those are the ones you can actually click on. Some are closed, so we're going to look for the post-secondary one. Okay, click on that. And then here. And this one's not showing it, so let's try it again. Find one. Ah, here we go. So sometimes with test data, it doesn't want to work, just like some of the production live one doesn't want to work. Um, so we're going to only look at the high schools. So you may see multiple schools listed under here, but since this is a post-secondary opportunities report, and we're only looking at high school, We'll click on the high school. 
And then right up here is some really good information where it says general instructions. It's just going to kind of tell you, hey, this is pretty populated information, where it comes from. Um, some little tidbits of what we've talked about through the presentation will also be listed here. And then any manuals or quick guides that we have will be linked to um, single sign-on through the WAVE, and you'll have those links just available to you. That way you don't have to pop out of the WAVE just to go to our website to get the documents. So they should all be posted there for you. So you'll go on down, and some of the fields you're going to be paying attention to um, is your school ID. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that matches yours. Um, local ID, STNs are important because you want to make sure all of the students that are listed here are going to be the ones that um, are participating in an approved post-secondary opportunity. Grade level can only be 9th through 12th, so you're going to want to make sure there's no, you know, 8th graders that popped in there by accident or something. Then we're going to scroll all the way over to where it says the HAS code, or course. This needs to always be marked true for it to count. Falses, you're going to want to filter to make sure that all the falses are, you know, fixed and true. Now, any kind of corrections you're going to want to make to this report, you're going to have to make through uh, your student information system. So that's where you would do all your correcting. So here would be where you're mapping your, you know, where the errors are but then you're going to be logging into your student information system to correct that report. Because then once it's corrected in your uh, student information system, it'll be refreshed overnight and then populate into the WAVE. Um, participation, that would need to be marked 1. So any zeros you have here, you're going to want to be looking at to find out why that's a zero. Uh, and that could be because you know, the course isn't an approved course or um, you have, you're missing a field. And so that's where we'll go next. And so to find out what's going on with that student, you would go back over to the left here, and you would click on this little uh, plus sign. And so that would open up and expand to a little bit more information that we're needing when we're trying to troubleshoot why that student isn't a one or a true. Um, we're going to make sure the OCAS code is correct. We're going to make sure we have an official course title. We're going to make sure we have the correct instructional level that matches that course. And then we're going to make sure the term span is what is described is truly what that course is, and that the tr uh, term span description matches the length of the course. And then that the grades that are in entered match your length of the course. Um, and then you're going to want to make sure your local course description is also included in there. And so that's where you'd look. And so after you've corrected all that in your student information system, then this should um, be corrected. And then once everything is finished and you've looked through every student and you've made all the changes you need to make, then you would um, finish the report. And then it would also need to be certified and closed out at the district level by your superintendent. So they would be the one that finalizes the report after um, the local school, the principal, and everybody has looked through it and done their part. So, so let's go back over here to our presentation. Where'd it go? It wouldn't be a presentation if we didn't have technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So now that we've accessed the report and kind of know where we're going, of course, if there's ever any questions or you need help navigating um, the system, you can call anybody in our office at the Office of Accountability, or you can call um, Lakeisha Simon, who is with Student Information, um, and she can help you because she does all things WAVE. <laughs> okay, and we're just going to go through here since we've already discussed those. So how do I fix my data? Um, so those are some things you want to look at. Um, this report is a current view of your post-secondary opportunities, and it's sent through your student information system. Um, so coding needs to be corrected at this level. Um, so that's probably where you would start. Um, if a student is taking an approved AP course, it needs to be coded that way. So that's something that you know, you're really going to want to focus on. Um, use the post-secondary opportunities guide as much as you can um, to identify the correct course codes. Um, and that should be associated with everything that is post-secondary should be in that guide. But again, we're always available for that assistance. Um, another thing you can look at in the 
wave is the data validation wizard, um, and that's the find missing students. So if you're not seeing a student in that report, you can click on the find missing students, and that one should show you if that name is in that report. Um, and so that's a good tool to use. And again, any corrections that you make in your um, student information system is updated to the report nightly. So some known issues and their fixes. These are just a couple examples of what we've um, gone through with the last post-secondary opportunities report that have been fixed or we've been able to answer. So we're just going to go through a couple of those. Um, a common error is a student has a course but doesn't have a participation marked as one. Because um, remember, if you want the participation, it has to be one, not zero. So the troubleshoot with that is you would review your term span description and make sure that it matches the letter grades that have been received. So an example of that is if your term span is quarters, then we would expect to see four grades for that student. Um, a student does not have a course listed, but is participating in a post-secondary opportunities coursework. Well, a couple things to look at on that one would be to make sure the course is in your local student information system and that that student is enrolled in that course. Um, and to make sure it is an approved course. Um, so you'd want to make sure it is an OCAS code. Um, you could call your vendor to ensure that the course data that they're providing is being sent to us um, in, a good, in the correct format. And so the way to do that is you would need to contact uh, the Office of Data and Student Information because um, they are the ones who work a little bit stronger with the WAVE as it's being produced. And they can tell you if uh, what the vendor is providing the WAVE is translating correctly for what's in your student information system. So those are a couple things you can do if um, you know a student is participating but it's not showing up. So a couple little um, side notes as well is starting in school year 2019, students taking career tech courses uh, through a local technology center can now be entered into the school's local student information system by using the appropriate uh, career tech OCAS codes. So you um, at the school level will be able to enter the career tech courses um, for those students. You would be using the 8,000 or 9,000 level code um, with the instructional level code of college level 0576. So your course codes would be 8,000, 9,000 level, um, but your instructional level code would be, you would mark it as college level, which is 0576. Um, it's encouraged that you start, that the schools start coding students enrolled and attending at the local technology centers, um, just so you guys can get comfortable with that. Um, and so that is something that you're really going to want to start doing. Um, so also note that since this year will be the first time districts are entering any information for career tech courses in their local student information system, um, career tech is backing that data with sending um, our department, the, the State Department, um, a file that will have all that data in it. So we'll make sure that whatever is Career Tech is providing is what matches the wave. So just a small little um, clip about the SMART report. Um, the SMART report is a supplemental to the October 1 consolidated report. So the information you see on the SMART report is going to look very similar to what you did back in the October 1 consolidated report. And the purpose is to ensure that all students and their demographic information are reported at least once. So if they weren't caught in the October 1 report, then we'll be able to catch those students in the SMART report for the state. Um, and then this report, along with a couple of the others, does close June 30th. And then just some final reminders. We do have a couple of different reports open right now. The demographic overlay, um, it opened up last month. The snapshot for the assessment data is going to be on April 29th. So we encourage um, all schools to have that demographic overlay um, report certified and you know gone through before April, April 29th because that is the final snapshot that vendors will see. Um, and then please make sure that your EL students are being marked correctly. So that includes your first year and second year proficient students. And then your demographic overlay for this district um, only certifies the demographics. So we've had some calls um, that, you know, there's students that aren't enrolled in their school anymore or they've moved. Um, we still want to collect those demographics on them. We're not as worried about the if they've moved or, you know, 
to another state or anything, but they have been in your school, so we want to collect that demographic. And then that report also closes on June 30th. Okay. And so where can you go to get help? Um, the Office of Accountability is always here to assist you, and we're always working to um, provide more resources and more communication and assistance to the districts. So if you have questions or you have some topics or issues that you would like us to do a webinar on or um, have a presentation on, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, so the Office of Accountability um, has a couple of individuals in there that can help you now. Um, we have Maria Harris. She's our awesome executive director, um, and she's always available by email or phone um, if you have any questions. Um, I'm there pretty much all the time and available to answer any of your questions. We do have our Director of Data Management, Jim, who a lot of districts have talked to. He's always available and full of information for your assistance. And then we have Alyssa and Lisa who are always there. Thank you for joining.